Hello. Hi. I wanted to show you another category of bookish objects. This is totally tangent to the news, but who cares? <laughs> so there is this very, very famous object in the Smolian Museum in Oxford. It's called Alfred Jewel. And let me show you a few more images of it. Here it is. Uh, from all the side, you can see an image made in animal. Uh, it's supposed to be, well, nobody knows precisely. Uh, it used to be identified as uh, uh, a portrait of Alfred the Great, as an angel. And nowadays they think it's an allegory of sight, whatever that means. But the interesting thing is, are the letters. It says, Alfred me fecit, so Alfred made me. And Alfred is most definitely Alfred the Great, uh, the uh, late ninth century uh, monarch of uh, West Sussex, Wessex, who stopped uh, the Vikings from totally devouring the Britonic king uh, and Anglo-Saxon kingdoms uh, of earlier. And uh, we know a bit about what it can be. So if uh, 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 I don't know if you can see on the bottom of it, there is like a tube. So something was clearly inserted into it. And uh, the general consensus it, um, is that it is a pointer. Uh, so in medieval times, people never read, uh, first of all, they read aloud. Uh, 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 and they never read just, uh, just looking at the page. They needed a pointer to, uh, to follow. I don't know why, but it was very widespread. And Alfred the Great, who was the first bookish English king. He wrote books, he translated books, and he sent them all over his kingdom. And in the preface, uh, preface uh, uh, of one of the uh, best known of these books, he says that I will send this book, which is a set of uh, church laws, to every county or something of my state, and I will attach an estel. And Estel is a pointer. So this is probably one of them, one of those Estels sent to the bishops uh, of the uh, late, uh, late ninth century. And until very recently, this was the only example known. So it was basically a hypothesis that there is this class of late medieval Alfred era golden objects called estels that were sent around the country. And this is where uh, uh, portable antiquities scheme comes in. Because if you go there and you search for estel, you will find quite a few examples, ranging from rather rich looking ones, like this little gem found very recently, like four years ago or so. Uh, there are more golden examples. So this was probably also a gift to a bishop, perhaps not to Archbishop of Canterbury, as the previous example probably was, who knows, because it's so rich. It's one of the best examples. But this is also not, uh, uh, not a church warden Estels. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's a very impressive uh, object and a very expensive one. But also we see, you know, here's another golden one. I just can't stop looking at them. I mean, look at this. Uh, but there are also simpler examples also from the same era. I like this one too. So this was probably used by Again, a clergyman, but of a much uh, a low, a lower status, but still a person having access to books and having a special implement for reading them. So go and read about them. Uh, all of them have a story attached. They are very well documented and they are all found very recently. So in the last 10 years, the corpus has ballooned enormously. There was a big exhibition of this material a few years back. You can find all about it on the Wikipedia page for Alpha Jewel. And I highly recommend you do that. So this was the first piece of news. So another piece of news also from uh, the British Isles, this time from Wales. 
a recent anniversary of uh, the University of Wales Trinity St. David Library uh, sparkled uh, lots of events, mostly online because of COVID, but uh, also an exhibition devoted to one of uh, uh, their best known uh, books. It's called very, very evocatively Monk's Blood Manuscript. I don't know if it's still on show, but the news seems uh, uh, pretty recent. So if you can go and see it. And well, you can see why uh, the manuscript is called that. But the story is a bit more complicated. The manuscript itself is clearly late medieval. I mean, they're saying 13th century, and uh, I believe it's certainly no earlier than that. But a 19th century traveler visited the library and was shown this manuscript uh, as a manuscript covered with blood of 7th century uh, martyr monks. That happens a lot. No, no problem whatsoever. Um, That's all miracles. That's how miracles work. Yeah, and the story somehow stuck. And uh, uh, from what I read online, local guides retell that story to the, uh, to this day. And I, I I was wondering, did they make a DNA analysis? Is it even human blood? Is it even blood? I couldn't find any information. I I guess they, you know, when you have a good legend, you don't want to spoil it with facts. I would really love to see it when you go next time, maybe you can see it. And so this is what the whole page lo uh, looks like. This is the only image I could find. Uh, so uh, most of pictures are of just uh, this one drop of well, blood. Well, because that's or... the most important part of the manuscript, obviously. No, but look at that. There's lots and lots of it. I mean, there are splashes of blood or, uh, uh, or something. Or something, yeah. So it would be interesting to find out what it is. But it reminded me, and I wanted... Uh, we sort of mentioned it before, but never uh, shown any uh, pictures. There is a very famous uh, a manuscript in Germany associated with uh, Saint uh, Bonifacius. Uh, yeah, it was certainly owned by him, but it is famous for another reason. It's famous because of the legend that is depicted in this miniature that when he was attacked by heathens, I don't know, by heathens, heathens yeah, uh, yeah, he uh, put out a book and it protected it uh, him uh, uh, from uh, uh, from the sword. It didn't end well anyway, but you see the book. Uh, here's another depiction. You see, the book looks like this. You can see those slashes on the top, and it's not, uh, it's not subtle, right? Here's what it looks like as a whole. I mean, so it just maybe, just might be that very book that he used to protect himself from a sword, but more recent analysis suggests that these are, are made by a knife and not a sword. And uh, uh, to conform with the legend. Yes, may, and very likely much later. But uh, there's a twist. A very recent analysis has found this uh, unprepossessing uh, little mark. And it is clearly a nail mark. Mm -hmm. So at some point, of, uh, some scientists argue, this book was nailed to a tree, which was a documented pagan practice when, uh, uh, when German and Celtic and Viking warriors seized early Christian books, they often nailed them to a tree to, uh, to denigrate it. So May, may it really be that very book that was with the saint in his last moments that he used to protect himself? Who knows? But it is a, it is a, great, sto uh, it is a great story. And I really 
I would love to see it. It's in Tübingen and they uh, they do display it uh, uh, very often. So if you are in Tübingen, go go visit this uh, this great book. And it's not the only book associated with Saint Bonifacius in Tübingen. It's also not the only great book in Tübingen. Do go there. Great place. Definitely. That's that's all from me. Yeah, I guess uh, that's it from both of us. And uh, as usual, uh, many thanks to all, all of our viewers. And uh, we'd like to say thanks to our patrons on Patreon. And please, please consider joining the crowd because uh, uh, money that we get from get from our patrons is the only source uh, for our podcast to 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 get the videos edited uh, well not the only source because if it was the only source we wouldn't get uh, um we would only get half of the videos edited or something like that we still have to add some money but uh, uh, still uh, we we would like to uh, invite more people to join the crowd because uh, we have a lot of plans we we would like to uh spend more time uh, working on the french spanish and now russian versions of the podcast and uh, uh we'll also invite uh, people who are ready to uh read uh, and uh, check the spanish uh, french and russian subtitles uh, of the podcast so for uh further translation into english so that uh, uh english speaking uh members of the English speaking audience uh, would be able to uh, uh, to watch this uh, uh, other language uh, podcast versions uh, of five Wines podcast. So if you are ready to volunteer, uh, it's, it's an unpaid job, it's a volunteer uh, uh, thing, uh, but if you are ready to volunteer, please send us a message or, or just leave a comment and we will reach out to you. Uh, we've got uh, uh, several answers from people who are ready to work on the Spanish version of the podcast and I'll be reaching out to them uh, pretty soon, uh, but we still have uh, to find people for, for the French version. Uh, it's a bit easier uh, with Russian for us, with the Russian language, uh, obviously, uh, but uh, yeah, French version still uh, demands some attention. So if you are speaking French and if you are, if you love book arts and the history, and if you're ready to uh, um, spend some time with uh, reading, reading uh, and correcting the subtitles, uh, please, please reach out. Um, thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Yeah. See you. Yeah.